we finally got down to Long Island. And after failing to get here last year, we cannot wait to go ashore to see some historic sites, something called a shrimp hole, and of course, Dean's Blue Hole. I don't know what I was picturing, but it wasn't this. This is awesome. Along the way, we'll dodge some squalls and try and remember how to drive a car. No, not a good idea. Okay. Yesterday, we pulled up to Thompson Bay and dropped anchor. Then we walked to the nearest settlement and picked up a rental car. With all those logistics already taken care of, we're ready to go. The forecast said it was going to be sunny all day, and I'm not sure I believe it. But we've got the car, so we're going to go. Rain or shine. We have so much stuff with us today. Normally, we can only bring with us, for filming days, we can only bring with us, ugh, we can only bring what we can carry on our backs. And today, We've just exploded with, oh, we can bring this, we can bring this, we can bring this. Having a rental car is mind blowing. possibly like move into this car but that's okay it's better to be over prepared than under let's go pressure sensor seems to be going off and it's beeping at us. Won't stop. So first order of business is to find a place where we can pump up these tires a little bit and make the incessant beeping go away. I'm not gonna lie, having our first stop in Long Island be the gas station is maybe not the most exciting thing, but never ending beeping was just not gonna work for us all day long. Fortunately, we found the air pump, but there's no uh, like gauge meter, uh, reader anywhere. Do you need a gauge? The one thing we kept hearing about Long Island was how amazingly kind everybody that lives here is. And I have to say within a couple of seconds of us needing help, somebody pulls right up and offers us a gauge. Well, the way these things work is it has to roll in order for it to re-gauge itself. So we're gonna put up with the beeping for a few minutes and see what happens. Yeah, something tells me I'm gonna get, be getting out that way. Ooh. It's like li like feast time for the mosquitoes. We are covered. You can see them everywhere. Most places in the Bahamas, we don't see a lot of mosquitoes. You know, CMs are a lot more prevalent, but they're like swarming everywhere. This has to be one of the more interesting things that we've ever done. I never once considered wanting to do this, but we are going to a freshwater shrimp hole. It's supposed to be behind. Oh, there we go. So I have a little known superpower of not ever really getting bit by mosquitoes, or when I do, the bites go away after literally like two minutes. We're gonna test that superpower today. I'm so jealous of his superpower because when I get bit, I just like, they welt up into these horrible, well, they're mosquito bites and I just am jealous. Look how nice. Where are we going? I have no idea. <laughs> we heard from a couple of other boaters that this was a fun thing to do. We did absolutely zero research ourselves. I wasn't expecting a walk this long to get to the shrimp hole. So I have no idea 
where we're going. This trail is actually quite lovely. You can hear all sorts of little birds and creatures running around. It's very peaceful. After all morning being connected to the phones and the devices, it's just kind of nice. No internet, just me and these birds. You guys, trail. I'm here. <laughs> of course, Charles. It's just kind of lovely. Can we go that way? Yeah. There. Oh, going to the trail. We've made it. all for nature but not when it's eating me alive we have got to get out of here there is so little information about this church online and what is online is actually kind of confusing. They say that the Spanish started building it in the 1600s, but they also say that 100 pounds was donated in 1888 for its completion. And then they also say that it was completed in 1799. So the information is kind of everywhere and I think that sometimes that's just how history goes in a place that's so remote but it's an absolutely beautiful church and the one thing that I could find that people pretty consistently agreed on was that it's the oldest church in all of the Bahamas which makes it pretty special also great craftsmanship it still looks pretty good for how old it is these windows are so pretty I doubt I'll be able to find any drawings or images about what it looked like at the time, but if you just use your imagination, you can tell this place was stunning. Because even in its ruined form right now, it's still gorgeous. Look at that distressed wood. There are a lot of people in Atlanta that would pay a lot of money for some distressed, pretty looking wood like that. On to the next. There are a lot of churches here on Long Island, and that's probably because there are a lot of people that live here. The population is just over 3,500, and the population is spread out in all these settlements all down the length of the island. Most of the settlements were named after the original founders. So the Sims settlement was founded by the Sims family, and so on and so on. Oh my God! Eventually they'll land on me and we can kill them. <laughs> yes! <laughs> no more beeping. We did it. And we are back on track. I just plugged in our next stop into Maps and it's 31 kilometers away. So that's why having a car is so beneficial today. <laughs> How's driving on the opposite side of the road from what you're used to? It's actually pretty, it's pretty intuitive. And I think a large part of that has to do with the fact that it's actually a right side drive car. Yeah. Uh, so you're used to being in the middle of the road Right. I think if it was like a normal left side drive car like you have in the States, and you're driving on the left side, that would be a lot more awkward, but it's very easy. So like, I feel that you're like very confident over here with it, but like, because I'm not used to sitting on this side without a wheel, like I keep like freaking out. Like I feel like I feel very uncomfortable sitting on the side of the car and not having a wheel. Maybe we could pick me up like a little. Actually, this does better. <laughs> oh boy, there's some real history here. 
This church was built by John Hawes, or better known as Father Jerome. This guy was the original jack of all trades, travel the world sort of nomad. He became an architect and started building churches in 1897 in England. But by 1903, he was ordained as a priest in the Church of England. And listen, I'm not throwing any shade for a fellow that wants to change careers, but I just think it's very interesting that somebody would go from building churches to wanting to lead a congregation in one. But life changes were far from over at that point. By 1910, he left England and came to the Bahamas, which is when he built St. Paul's Church. By 1911, just a year later, he was done with his mission and left the Bahamas for the United States. And he was done with the Church of England too, because he converted to Roman Catholicism. And after that, he just became the ultimate backpacker for a while. He roamed around the United States and Canada for years. Eventually, he traveled to Rome, this time to become ordained as a Catholic priest. And because he can't stay anywhere for too long, he picks up his bags and goes to Australia. He puts away his collar and gets back out his architect hat and starts building churches all over Australia until he decides to take a page from my bucket list, hop on a boat and come back down to the Bahamas where he starts building churches all over the Bahamas. But this time he's building Roman Catholic churches. And because the original church that he built here in Clarence Town was Anglican, he of course had to build a brand new Roman Catholic church here so that, you know, he had somewhere to worship. Steps feel good. It's, it's been a minute. When most people change religion, they don't have to build themselves a whole new church, but our guy, Father Jerome, he was on it. You can certainly tell, built by the same guy. Oh yeah. Uh, very similar structures with uh, the style to match the church. I have a clear favorite out of the two of them. Do you? The Anglican one. Really? I think so. Yeah. Wait, the Anglican one. Yeah. This, the red one. Yeah. Yes. Me too. Hands down, I think it's prettier. I like the feel of the Anglican one more. I like that it has like a place of rest, a burial ground at the church. I like that there were flowers and it was like, just had more of like a welcoming kind of vibe to me. But that's just me. I don't know. I don't know. I just, I just liked it a heck of a lot more. That's all I gotta say. We are so hungry. So it's time to find some food. The patio we are on is beautiful. It overlooks the Clarence Sound Harbor, and there's actually a rainstorm that's coming in that you can just watch it roll in right now. It's really, really neat. First of all, this is like the biggest taco that I've ever been served in a restaurant. Size is not the only thing it has going for it. The pico on top is like so fresh and minced so well and brings all this flavor. And then the mahi is fried and delicious and it's so flaky, it just like peels apart. And then it's got this coleslaw tucked down in the bottom that adds some crunch and also a little creaminess. It just all comes together so well and it's so good. Mmm. Mmm. So good. Turn it off so I can start eating like a heathen. Yeah. We didn't just choose this restaurant because of its top-notch taco reviews, although that didn't hurt. We really wanted to come to Clarence Town and we didn't think we were gonna have time to sail down here. Clarence Town is the capital of Long Island and had a population of 86 people in the 2010 census. It sits on the east side of the island and therefore its Atlantic side shoreline is a lot rougher than where Leviosa sits on the west side. 
And we've never seen a more beautiful rainbow, so to say that we're glad we came would be a true understatement. Our next stop has a close time of six o'clock, so we are hightailing it out of Clarence Town to get to the grand finale, the big tamale, the finish, the thing, the reason that people go to Long Island. It's so close to the shore. Yeah. I don't know what I was picturing, but it wasn't this. This is awesome. This is, this is the coolest thing I've ever seen. Drops off quick. Looks like it. All right, let's do this. Okay. It has been far too long since we have been in the water. <sighs> that same feeling, that wonderful, peaceful feeling is back just like it never left. I am in love with the way that these clouds are reflecting on this water. It's just so clear in here. Beautiful. Oh man, we are losing the sun and we are supposed to be out of the blue hole by 6 p.m. and that time is rapidly approaching. So, I'm really hoping that maybe we get a chance to sneak back by here again. Um, I suppose that all depends on the car situation. <laughs> Our ride home left us in awe of this remarkable island and incredibly exhausted. We watched the sun go down, got some work done, and went to bed dreaming of blue holes that reached down to the depths of the earth. And in case you were wondering, we did make it back. Watching the drone footage from a bird's eye view had us kicking ourselves for not taking the climb up to see it firsthand. As it turned out, it was a remarkably easy climb for a view and a moment that will stay with us for the rest of our lives. The view from above did absolutely nothing to quench the desire to dive in below. So we all enjoyed a little dip in the cool blue waters and drying off in the sugary soft sand. So it says, I think it says something about how special we think this place is because we want to see a lot of things in this world. So we rarely come back to anything twice. And we instantly knew we wanted to come back here again. And so if you ever have the chance to come here, you should take it.